Hi there, folks. Kind of a little impromptu go live show on a Friday morning. <laughs> Trying to test some new software, and it, you know, I could run a lot of tests on my own, but um, it tends to work a lot better when you have people helping you. Ooh. That's not where I want to be. Let me see if I can find my. There we go. So say hi. Anybody wants to join? If not, I'll do this alone. Hey, there's a few folks. Hey guys, how are you? I uh, I'm testing some new software. Hey Jen. Hey Carrie. Oh my god. <laughs> how you guys doing? Happy Friday. I guess happy Good Friday to a lot of you. I I think I just moved my lamb recipe over so we could I could see you. And uh, hope hopefully you guys are doing great. I um. I know we didn't have live office hours yesterday. I was still uh, hung over from my boot camp from the day before, but uh, I'm 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 constantly trying to come up with you know new software and better mediums for me to deliver things to you so that you have a better effect every week when we do our show on Thursday. And so I've been testing and testing and testing this new software called Ecam Live, and I've been having trouble this this microphone that I use. I, I guess you could see it. We've been having some trouble. Uh, mod it's modulating too much, and it doesn't behave that way with my other software or my. I have a few different other programs. Anyway, I've been working with the developers of the product to try to get this right, and I think we might have it. Uh, but my tests aren't long enough for me to really see if some of the things that we fixed are done. So there's nothing like helping you in the <laughs> process. So. Um, so Chavez, the okay, wait. So so wait. So let I want I want to I want to do something. So I we tried this a few weeks ago, where I was um, moving your questions as an overlay into into the in, into my image, and if you guys have any preferences on um, on font, I I actually I can do things now like this and. We have, you know, I was like tinkering with sizing issues and so forth and font and so on. So the answer to the question is Ecamm Live, E-C-A-M-M -M, Live. When I was doing it inside the Facebook groups, everything worked perfectly. When I was doing it for YouTube, the microphone kept dropping, my screen was going nuts, the software kept dropping the microphone and, and making my... Uh, desk or my my MacBook microphone, the microphone, and it was it was causing um, uh, dead dead spots and things like that, because eighty percent and eighty percent of their users were are Facebook Live users. I, I do that, but I I like YouTube a lot better. So anyway, so that's the answer to that question. But let's can you guys do me a favor? Ask me your questions. Let's let's just do a little impromptu here. And if you if you hear the microphone drop or it goes like silent or you hear really big static, can you let me know? And if you don't, that's cool. I just ran a five minute test before I jumped on with you and I, I didn't hear that. So I'm hoping it gets a little bit better. Uh, Babita, how are you? You're looking to get in the state department FSO. I'm not, um, I'm not sure what that is, but um, if you give me some more information, I can try to give you a hand. Darter, how you doing? Jen, sup with you? Carrie Freeman, how are you? Such a good, such a good supporter. Simply H, hey, Raj, how are you? Happy Friday. Javier, great to see you. Mohit, how you doing? Let's get this. Let's get Mohit's, um, let me see if I could do this. So let me, do a little more maneuver in here. There we go. Now I can actually, okay, so you guys are probably seeing this. This is a little bit of a small font. And I'm going to make this bigger. So this is part of this is ooh, 
This is part of the testing. There we go. Let me see if I can save that. That's it. Hang on. Let me make it bigger. Sorry, patience. This is why we test. There we go. It's a little bit, a little bit better. I was trying to, you know, we did this a few weeks ago. I used this software and the font was so big and it overlaid my face. And anyway, okay. Do I have to have LinkedIn profile to get executive roles? Is that essential? Fantastic question. I am so bummed out. We, Milewalk, you guys know I have an executive search for Milewalk. We do a lot of executive search. So, and everybody that we recruit is 100K or more, and a lot, many of them are, are multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars. I am always shocked when a senior person like that does not have a LinkedIn profile. I, Mohit, I would say, I don't just have a LinkedIn profile to get a job. Have a LinkedIn profile to grow a healthy network and, and really to, to nurture that. But I think, you should, I think you should have one. I don't think anything is mandatory like that, but I just think it's, good, it's a good idea to have one. And, and I also think it's a good idea to you know, nurture the relationships that you have with people online. I even have a video called Business Networking, How to Build Professional Relationships, which gives you all of my mechanics of how I exactly keep uh, my network in um, fresh and, and meaning engaged with people that I do know and the reach outs to people that I, do, that I don't know. And what happens is the more that you do that, the more that it manifests itself. So as it, um, I, I did a coaching session yesterday with, with uh, a guy named Eric who's in my job search boot camp. And one of the things that I told him that he needs to do, and, and this goes for all of you job seekers, when you are in, when you're working with a recruiter, maybe it's a third party recruiter, and he said, you know, a lot of these things weren't going anywhere. And when I showed him that his mentality when connecting with a recruiter always should be about the value that you give to each other. The value that that recruiter has to him is a window into the employment market. It might not be right at this moment. But the value that he also has is helping the recruiter fulfill a position at some moment in time. So he's a possibility. But at this moment, this immediate moment, the best value that he can have is to give the recruiter referrals to other people who the recruiter could use to expand his or her network. It's the same kind of thing with your LinkedIn profile and just ongoing business relationships. If the chain dies with you where you don't help the other person grow their network or introduce them to other people, that's sad. That's bad. So anyway, so that's a little color on, on the LinkedIn thing. But I, I think it's a bigger question, and I think it has more to do with, with a healthy network. You've heard that expression, your net worth, or wait, your network is your net worth kind of thing. It's, it's kind of true. Hey, Diana, how are you? Babita. Al Pearson, how are you? I, um, I did get your email. I have a like, I don't know, a couple thousand emails that I'm going to have to go through this weekend. And hopefully my wife is not going to hit me over the head because I have a lot of stuff that we have to do because we're hosting Easter on Sunday. But um, but but I, I love that you, uh, you're you having some luck. And um, that's great. And, and I wish you lots of luck on that. Uh, Levin, Levin Eyes. I don't know if that's like I, I can't hear you now. Is anybody having, is anybody having trouble hearing me? All right, let me let me move this off the screen. Um, let me see. Get back to that. Is actually do please let me know if anybody is having trouble hearing me. All right. Javier, what kind of question should you be asking interviewer for entry level position? I have an interview for accounting. Javier, uh, you are in luck. Actually, all of you are in luck. You don't even know this yet, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let the cat out of the bag. So one thing that I would do is on, on Tuesday, t- Tuesday in a, in, a, in a couple days, at 6.30 Central Time in the U.S., which is where I live, I release my new video every Tuesday. There's at 6.30, a new video comes out. The video that comes out on this Tuesday is six big questions to ask a recruiter in your interview screen. So in the first interaction, whether it's the HR person, the recruiter, the hiring official, or whoever, 
These are six awesome questions that you need to ask. They all apply to you. And then Javier, the other thing that I would do is I would look at um, a video that I have out. It's, it's pretty popular. My top five favorite questions to ask before you take any job or basically it might be my fa- top five favorite questions to ask in a job interview. And I think three of those are really, really good for you. So check, check that out. Chavez, Chavez, I think that is. Definitely going to check that out. Cool. Carrie Freeman. My job prospect telling me they have to wait 30 days before they can hire me due to budget. I'm still searching in the meantime. Your thoughts on this? It's a construction company if that matters. Carrie, um, the, the type of company in this case doesn't matter. The, the 30 days, so um, it, is not, uh, it is not uncommon. These things happen. Uh, sometimes there are publicly traded um, companies that want to wait till their quarters are over to start you so they they favor not starting people in march they'd rather start them in april um you know they don't want to start them in june they'd rather start them in july those kind of things uh sometimes there are budgets like that the one the one thing that i would um i would do so so my thoughts are i wouldn't freak out about it definitely not don't sweat it i mean it, it happens i would continue to search because you never you never know. The other thing is to stay connected with them. I would say, okay, um, I you know, I, I I won't start until you know the thirty days. Is there anything I can do in the meantime to stay connected with you and your team? So even if you don't have your official like offer letter or or maybe you sign the offer letter, you didn't mention that. Um, it, but it, maybe maybe you didn't maybe you sign the offer letter and you just can't start for 30 days. If that's the case, I would definitely say, hey, can I drop by the office, get connected, and have some a coffee with some people, get to know them a little bit. Um, if there's anything that you can share with me that I could start doing as homework or whatever. But the touch points help. Grab lunch with you know some people and just kind of get get connected with them. Say, okay, no problem. You got your budget. It you know I can't come for a few you know few weeks, but I can still be part of the team. You know what I mean, or or, or develop relationships and kind of have a head start running in. That's what I I would do. All right, what kind of modification, Darter? What kind of modification should be made for federal listing in the ATS? I don't know that I would. You know I know you know people ask about the nonprofit sectors, the public sectors. You know, are they drastically different than the commercial sectors? I don't think that there's a huge difference. We 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 do have a lot of people in the Mile Walk Academy and in the Job Search Boot Camp that are federal employees that are state that got at jobs. And let me know. Actually, let me know if uh, if, if 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 I just dropped there uh, because I got a flash that said the audio input was was changed. Um, but we do have some people like they got some jobs in California in for the state of California. So I don't know that I would you know do a whole lot different. I, I would I would go through the stuff that I've taught you. You know, go through the resume playlist. Uh, use JobScan. I recommend JobScan. I have a little link because I have a relationship with them. They give me a couple of bucks, literally a couple of bucks, every time somebody ultimately engages in their program. But I would I would not do anything differently. I would check the you know job descriptions are usually pretty good when they're uh, public institutions or organizations. So no, I don't know that there's anything all that drastic that I would do. All right. Hey Darren, Kim, how are you? Mm. Kim, great uh, great question. Let's put this Kim. Let's put this up. Since we're, you know, I, my, my screen is not what it, you know, I, I, I should be, I should have a better job of doing this, but whoop, how about that? So this looks a little, let me see if I could, let me, let me see if I can increase the font. It's like some of you ask, some of you ask questions that are real quick and some of you ask questions that are, you have a lot of, 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 of words in them. Oh, I guess I can't, let me see if I can, dang. Okay, I guess I can't, <laughs> I can't mock with that. All right, Kim's asking, how can someone get into the private sector after being a police officer for 23 years? Kim, what I would do is um, 
I would actually head to the Mile Walk blog or andrewlasavita.com. There's several ways you can get there, but andrewlasavita.com will take you into my Tips for Work and Life blog. That's the brand name of the blog. There's a search bar up in the upper right-hand corner or depending on if you're on a device, wherever, but regardless of where it is, I want you to type the words military veteran. Uh, I, you're in the police department, that to me, you're fire, per, you know, you're in the, if you're in the army, the Marines, the whatever, if you're in the, if you're in the police force or any sector like that, if you work for the fire department, I actually have a booklet uh, called how to go from military veteran to civilian professional. And there are some tips there. So get that book. It's free. And, um, you know, I have a post and that kind of stuff, but a lot of the stuff is in the booklet. I wrote it a few years ago, so I probably have some, some better tactics at each step in the process. Uh, so, but, but the one big point uh, and tip that I want to give you that you need to keep in mind to transition from being a police officer to getting into a commercial institution is the big hurdle that military vets or people like you have that commercial oriented people do not have is they don't have to connect the dots for the hiring official as to how what they've learned in their professional, you over 20 something years, right? What you've learned and how what you've learned applies to their environment. So when you're in the, you know, the military vets and, and, and police officers, same kind of thing. There, there, are, there is an organization to what you do. There's a hierarchy to what you do. There's a process to what you do. There's an organization to what you do. There's a detective nature to what you do, an intuition, all reading people, all of these things that are highly, highly valuable experiences and skills. You need to, to show whoever you're speaking with on the you know, civilian side how what you've done maps to what they need. Okay, so that, that is the biggest hurdle that a police officer, a fire person, fireman uh, or woman, a uh, military vet, and, and people of that nature have in moving into the, into the civilian workforce. Grab that, it's free. So I hope, I hope that helps. Great, great, great question. I probably need to brush that up a bit, um, you know, and it probably won't happen until Veterans Day, unfortunately. But, uh, but anyway, hope, hope that helps. All right, modifications to resume. Um, Darter, I think you were asking me. Hang on, sorry, sorry, folks. I'm 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 driving solo here today, and I'm wondering if you meant earlier. I can't remember what your question was. <laughs> I don't see your earlier. What kind of modifications? No, I'm I'm going back to what I said before there, Darter. Joseph, how you doing? Interviewed for a position on April 1st. Okay, we are on the 19th. Okay. My tech recruiter has not heard anything back. He says the company is still interviewing other candidates. Abandon hope on this one. So, Joseph, I would never uh, tell you to abandon hope when... Okay, so on one hand, 17, 18 days, that's a long time. Okay. But on the other hand, 17, 18 days, that's calendar days. And in between, you know, April 1st was... You know, I don't know what day of the week that was, but you only got so many, um, you know, work days in between. So it's probably been like a dozen, you know, workable days. Uh, there's obviously no issues with them interviewing other candidates. You know, companies are going to do that. I wouldn't necessarily abandon hope. Now, couple couple things. Next interview process that you start, or even 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 now, for any of you, I just put out a video a couple weeks ago, a week or two ago about um, when there's multiple candidates in your job interview process. You should always assume that there's multiple candidates in your interview process. Check the video out. It's less than 10 minutes. It, it shows you things that you should be doing and questions you should be asking the recruiter, the HR person, and, and the folks, whoever you're speaking with up front uh, about that to get a leg up on the other candidates, even if it's just understanding what the process looks like, how many people are in play, have there been candidates that have been through the process that are no longer in the process. There's value that you can wring out out of asking certain types of questions. So that's the first thing. Second thing is in your particular situation right now where you're a couple of weeks in, all I would do, actually I probably would do this today, is if you 
Uh, I don't know when the last time that you spoke with the tech recruiter or you communicated with him or her. I would probably send them a message. If you if, if you haven't done anything this week, it being Friday, I would send them a message and I would just say, hey, just wanted to check in. I recognize you're you know, looking at other candidates. Just wanted to get an update. Want to reiterate my interest. And I'm certainly ready to go to the next step whenever you are. So would love to hear back from you on any updates that you might have. And they, they should respond to that because a good interviewing process and good recruiters and good uh, hiring officials are in constant communication with all the candidates that are currently in play. You never want their mental state or their emotions to, 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 to slow down or you don't ever want them to lose that mental momentum, which in fact, just by the fact that you're asking me that, we know that that's what you're experiencing. So I, uh, I would not abandon hope, but I would check in. And I also, the last piece of advice I would give you is you always want to control what you can control. And you cannot control the speed of their process, the frequency in which they get back to you, but you can control looking for other opportunities. So keep that stuff in motion. Don't put your... I guess this Easter, I guess don't put all your eggs in one basket. A little pun is appropriate, but um, but I would I would keep keep rolling. I really would. Okay. Actually, I don't. Oh darn! I didn't put that up on top. All right. Let's see where are we at. All right. There we go. All right. Hang on, guys. I've got two lists here. <laughs> this stuff is nuts. I'm trying to keep them in sync. All right, there we go. Jen, Nicole, how you doing? Raj, how you doing? Jonathan, how are you? Audio so far so good. Hmm. I interviewed for a position three weeks ago. The earliest would hear back would be two weeks. I followed up with HR and I got an out of office message. Yes, I would not, you know, if, if, you know, I would not be overly concerned. It's a, it's a holiday for a lot of people. I would not. I would not be too concerned. I would wait till they get back. Kim, how are you? Mohit, if I'm if I'm not an executive profile, do you advise me to make up an executive profile with some stories? Um, I, you know, if you don't, if if you are not an executive, I don't want you to make up stuff that says you are. But I do want you to highlight how what you have done positions you for the next level for sure. All right, let's put let's put this one up. All right, so Chavez, after an interview, a VP called and said they wanted someone who is more cutthroat with their internal teams. How do I show that I enjoy teamwork and still do whatever is necessary internally? So, couple of things uh, about you know about this, and so there's obviously technical answers to your question and how you can do that. The first thing I would ask you is when somebody uses that kind of terminology, cutthroat, and you know, or forceful, or, or things of that nature, there's kind of a belligerent nature to it. I don't, I don't think that that kind of interaction, actually, in, in really 99% of the environments, I don't think that that works. And for me, that's not personally a preference. I don't want you to be cutthroat. I want you to just be sturdy in your domain and know what you need to get, you know, know what you need to do. And I want you to have a backbone and all that good stuff, but I don't want you to be cutthroat. So the first question I would ask yourself is, is this the kind of environment that I want to be in? Now, I'm going to give you an example. I presented a candidate to a client. He was a, a little bit junior for the role. It's an engagement management role where he is going to have to manage uh, projects that this consulting firm is implementing for its clients. It's a business to business solution. He went in for the interview and the VP of ops, the COO basically she got back to me and said, you know, we were a little concerned about his personality that she was concerned he was going to be a bit of a pushover that when the clients kept asking for more uh, requirements or things to be implemented in their solution that would increase the scope it would cost them more money he would not push back on them and so forth now that 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 is on, an on point piece of feedback but 
what what she was looking at is do we feel that this person will be sturdy enough you don't need to be cutthroat you don't need to be belligerent you just need to be able to stand your ground you need to you know have your processes in place and say look protocols say if we start you know adding these things then we either need to take stuff out or we need to bill you more that kind of stuff she wasn't convinced that he had that kind of persona i'm okay with that all right but if you're talking about internal teams that's a that's a bit of a different animal so just it's a philosophical question but something you need to ask yourself the second thing is i would probably ask them what gave them that impression Okay, so they made a deduction that you were not cutthroat enough. So the first thing that I would do in that case is if I got feedback like that, I would not get defensive and say, no, I am right? That I would, the thing that I would say is, okay, what led you to that conclusion? And then, and then what, what, what can happen is they might give you that insight and they might have misread the situation, in which case you can now clarify it. Okay, what I meant by that is, or actually, let me share a, an alternate you know, viewpoint or story or whatever. So I, you know, that's how I would handle that. I also, I also want to make sure that if it, in situations where you are in an interviewing process and they are misreading your level of skill or qualifications or things you can do that's one thing and usually something that you can clarify rectify and, and overcome when they are looking at you and thinking that your personality doesn't fit that's usually a harder hurdle to get over and i like i said i would seriously question whether you know that's the environment that i want to be in and i would probably even if they continue on with you i'd ask more questions about you know their definitions of this and examples of what they mean by that and that's that's i would i would try to go at the specific issue i, I really would so i hope i hope that helps silkia how you doing let's see if i sorry i'm moving two lists along so and i'm doing this solo so hang hang tight guys all right i had a friend tell me that his company won't hire me because I'm overqualified. I think this is what has been holding me back. What should one do? I've used your resume template. Let me get this over here. Okay. All right. This is a great one. And Silky, a great picture there. Love it. Your very friendly face. Um, okay. The overqualified question, folks. Mm. So a couple things. There's many different ways to tackle this. Number one. You can go check out my video about how to answer the overqualified question. There's two things, three things, four things you can do depending, but let's run through a couple of them. First one is if when, and by the way, I'm, there are many scenarios in which somebody can tell you you're overqualified. They can email it to you. They can tell you in person. They can tell you after the fact, right? They can tell you like when you submit your resume, they can tell you're overqualified. When you're in the interviewing process, they can tell you you're overqualified. And after the interviewing process, when they didn't tell you you're overqualified, then they say, we thought about it and we think you're overqualified. So there are many different scenarios and all of those can be handled a little bit differently. But let me give you a couple of, of tenets that you can, you can kind of bank on. If you are in a situation and you are interviewing for a position and you genuinely feel like you are overqualified, and you know they're not telling you anything you don't know. What I like to do is I like to be emphatic that I'm very interested in joining your organization. Okay, this looks like the best opportunity to join your organization based on my skill set and what you need. So the fact that I have qualifications that exceed this particular role is not a concern to me because I know that when I get in here, I'm gonna be able to prove myself and then hopefully my merits will be recognized and you will you will elevate me appropriately or you might increase my duties or whatever. So what's really important to me is that I get into your organization because I'm looking to join a great company. That could be one line uh, uh, or it could even just be the start. You can also say, but if you feel as though I'm so overqualified for this particular role, then what I would say is, is the, okay, I do want to get in your company, but if you feel like my expense might be too great 
for this role and you can't justify that, what I would then ask you is, is there an opportunity that you could increase the scope of responsibilities for this role to accommodate things that I can, you can actually take advantage of in my background and my experience that would warrant you paying me my rate, my salary, or my level, and, and then just recalibrating the role a bit. Companies will do that. The, if it, the small to medium-sized companies will look to do that if they love you. Okay, so if they really like you, they will alter that. It is not a big stretch for them to do that. Okay, so listen, I'm happy. You come to Mile Walk, I am happy to pay you more if you can do more, but I'm gonna pay you less if I think you can do less. So, so that's something uh, to keep in mind. And you know, then the other thing is, you know, if if it gets to the point where they say, hey, you know, I can't really, you know, we can't really change the role, you know, because basically the way the organization is is stacked or set up and so on then you just then it's up to you to say hey um I, listen i am good with this i really it's really important then you need to go into convince mode that it's more important about joining the company that's what i would do i hope um you know i i hope that helps and there are different ways you can handle it depending on whether it's email or whatever but if you're in an interview and, I, and you're doing this this way that is that's what i would fall back on but i would also check that uh i would check that um that that video out i think you'll i think you'll enjoy it all right, Raj, cool, Kim, cool, sounds good. Yeah, let me know, you know, I'm getting some flashes. This is the thing that was concerning me, is that it tells me my audio is being changed to my computer, to my, so, I mean, I know you guys don't know exactly what the setup looks like, but I mean, I have a microphone, I have a camera, I have a monitor with a bunch of stuff on it, and I have my MacBook that's sitting over there in the corner that's all folded, and it has a built-in microphone. The Thunderbolt has, uh, monitor has a built-in microphone. This has a microphone, and the, I mean, the microphone, and the camera has a microphone. So it starts switching things all over, and it gets confused, and it <laughs> worries me. All right. It did mute for a few seconds. Okay, so, so actually, let me see if I can do one thing. Hang tight, folks. I want to put the timestamp in. So it, 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 it did, it did mute for a couple seconds. That's probably right. And Diana, you said that at 9.51. I don't know. I don't know what time I actually started. All right. Let's see this one. All right. But Diana, thanks for that. And then Joe. Hi, Andy. When to wear a suit and when is it okay to wear a polo and slacks? I'm assuming, Joe, you're asking me about an interview. Here's what I always coach my candidates to do. So if the company, to, to, okay, we've all become, since I started work, you know, 30 years ago, I mean, I literally wore suits and ties every day to work, Monday through Friday, when I was traveling, didn't matter, that was just the way the world worked back then, and then it was, you know, casual Fridays, and then it was casual every, you know, every day, and then it was, oh, don't even worry about the polos and the slacks, you can wear the cutoff jeans with the holes in them, and so on, so I know we've become a button-down society, which I love, in fact, I mean, I work Get ready to go for a run, um, but but you know my default is if they don't say anything, you wear you go dressed in your Sunday best. I mean it's a full business attire for the boys. That means a suit and a tie, and for the ladies that means a skirt suit or a pant suit or something of that nature. If they say, um, you know, hey, we're a casual bunch. Um, you know, just dress kind of business nice or, or like business casual, then, you know, then I, then what I would tend to do is if they do tell you that, I would tend not to wear a polo. I would tend to wear a button down shirt um, only because I, this is just a personal preference. Um, and I know you guys probably see me in t-shirts every week on Thursday when I, you know, do the live show. But if I'm going to a meeting, um, I try to wear something that's pressed and it's going to be solid, uh, meaning it's there's not going to be you know the polo collar flaring up or the shirt you know moving this way or it not being ironed or whatever. So I at least just try to look you know try to look pressed. So that's something uh, that I would recommend. But if they say, hey, we're a pretty casual bunch, that's what I tend to do. I tend to go in a sport coat anyway, uh, even if they say casual. Um, and I wear jeans to a lot of my clients. Um, you know, environments, but, uh, but that's what I, that's what I would do there. Oh, and Joe, for a second interview. So, um, if they invited you to dress down, then I would dress down and I would fit in. I think that's totally okay. Hal, 
How, hell, how are you? A long time ago, boot camper? All right, hang on. Let's see. Let me see if I can get you a little more juice here. No, I can't. Like before, <laughs> before I was able to edit this and move it around, move it about, and I'm not sure why I can't right now. But uh, all right, Hal. Well, it's up there, Hal. Let's uh, let's see. I received a verbal job offer two weeks ago, and was told I would be receiving the written offer within a week, but not have received it yet. Is this the type of de uh, delay a common occurrence? Okay, so couple. Wait, Hal. Great to see you. A couple, couple things, and let's try move this over. Actually, let me let me see if I can shrink this back down, kind of put it under, and leave it up. Okay, this is a great, great, great question. So Hal and and any and anybody for that matter, when when an employer says, you know, here is our verbal offer, um, and then they say you will receive it within written within a day or three or five or whatever it is. They should stick to it. Okay, that that to me is etiquette. There is no reason that it should take that long. I mean, so let's let's be honest. You're you're going through a verbal and you're talking about the broad strokes. Here's my salary. Maybe here's what the benefits look like. Maybe here's a packet and so on. Okay, so when you go through all of this, you know, here's maybe what the bonus looks like and so on. They're dropping. Your, their, your employment agreement is boilerplate. It almost doesn't matter if you're the CEO or you know you're just an entry level person walking in you know to your first job. The employment agreements are generally boilerplate, so there's not a lot of tinkering you got to do. You put Hal Bruno in there, you put you know the salary in there, or whatever, or you know there's some non competes and there's some other clauses and things that say you won't moonlight or whatever. It's fairly boilerplate. Then there's usually for senior people there might be a little addendum. Or a a uh, an offer letter. Maybe everybody gets an offer letter, but the senior people might be a little bit, you know, a little bit more robust. Either which way, those tend to be boilerplate as well. So now it becomes a matter of sign off. Meaning, you know, what's happening is the recruiter or the HR person is assembling that from the boilerplate. You've given them or him or her your word. That's cool. Um, or, 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 hey, I, I'm receptive to that. Please give me the paperwork. I don't know if you, you actually uh, accepted this. You said you received it, um, but you didn't say if you accepted it or not. But you know, either which way, it shouldn't take very long for them to put the paperwork in front of you. And I, by the way, I would never advise any, any of you, actually this is a good teaching point, when you are given a verbal offer under no circumstances, under no circumstances, read my face here. Don't ever accept a verbal, uh, a verbal offer because you cannot see the fine print. The fine print that says the healthcare benefits are going to cost you four thousand dollars a month. Um, we're only going to pay you your bonus if you stay, you know, six months after every time a bonus is released. You've got all these little little T's and C's that go along with this which can erode those broad strokes and the financial components that they gave you verbally. I have no problem with you saying, okay, that's a, a, a great start. Um, I am that If that's the range we're talking about or the neighborhood we're talking about, I'm incredibly receptive to the written offer. I would love to see the written offer. And you, will, you should never accept anything until you have all of the paperwork in front of you. That means the offer letter, the employment agreement, the benefit package, and everything. You never, never do that. Then you can go in and how you know, session five of the boot camp, you got to go through that negotiation process and so forth. Now, to answer your question about the delay, the delay is bad because they have a delay beyond whatever date they told you. And two weeks seems to be pretty ridiculous to me. If they've given you a verbal offer, they should be able to put the paperwork together and somebody ought to be able to look at it. And I guarantee you, whoever is signing off on this is not reading your employment agreement. Okay, they, they might be looking at the offer letter if I don't know what the offer letter looks like, but if there's 10 paragraphs in the offer letter, they've got to just make sure that everything's in order. That should not take very long. So to answer your question, by the way, my, my, my dogs are with me today. Hey, Harley, come here. You want to say hi? No. See, look at him. Can you see him? There's little girl dog. 
Wars. <laughs> yeah, they're the loves of my life. Um, I didn't know I was going to be on so long, but that's okay. Um, but so anyway, so I, I hope I hope that helps. I mean, if it's me, I would go back and I would say, can you um, confirm when I'm actually going to receive this? And could you let me know what the holdup is? Because the thing that concerns me is, you know, I don't have a problem with somebody's out of the country and they can't get a hold of so and so. But you know what? I would I would have called you the moment that that person got on a flight, and and let you know, hey, so and so is going to be gone for a week. It might be another week before we actually get you that paperwork. So anyway, I I I, I hope that helps you, Hal. But what I would do, Hal, for you because you're in the boot camp, go into session five of the boot camp. And if there are other questions that you have, just go in the comment section. And if there's more detail that you have that you want me to know, just put it in there. And then I'll, I'll respond to that. You know that's the best way uh, to get to get me um, because then I get a special alert that goes in a prioritized box in my mailbox and all that good stuff. So I hope that helps, man. Good to see you. All right. Airhead07. <laughs> <laughs> I have a meeting on Tuesday with a hiring manager that I connected with through my network. How do I prepare when I don't know if it's going to be a formal interview? Love this. See, I don't know what the deal is with the sizing of this stuff. Oh, there we go. Now I can... Uh, no, jeez. All right. So I have a meeting. I love that. On air quotes. On Tuesday with a hiring manager that I connected with through my network. How do I prepare when I don't know if it's going to be a formal interview? So... Airhead07. Just assume it's a formal interview, right? If you're having a meeting or a cup of coffee or anything, I don't care what they call it, with a person who has the authority or influence, even if it's not the hiring official, but somebody who could put a good word in on your behalf or put a bad word in on your behalf, it is a an interview. You should treat it as such. So how do you prepare when you don't know if it's going to be? So first off, you assume that it is. If this person is in a hiring capacity, you better know about him or her. You better know about the positions that they have in their unit, in their unit, what those look like, if there are not public if there's a publicized job description or job descriptions or various jobs, study up on them. Make sure you know how what you've done maps to that, all this stuff I've been through with you guys a million times. And then the other thing that I would do is if there are no job descriptions, okay? So sometimes companies say, hey, we welcome all inquiries. We are always looking for all very talented project managers, system engineers, salespeople, and so on. What I like to do is I like to, you know, number one, you know the goods you got. You know what it is you do well. You know what you bring to the table. What I like to do is I like to go into LinkedIn and I try to look for, so let's say, I don't, I don't know what your, what your uh, function is, but let's say you're a project manager. I would go and I would look at all the project managers at that company and I would look at what they say they're doing. What is their role? Now, some of them will have LinkedIn profiles that'll be sweetly built out and others will not. So what I would do is I would just look at those and I would just see, oh, what are, what's their responsibilities? What are they doing? What do their profiles look like? Where did they come from? What are their backgrounds? You know, what's their evolutions and so on. That is all part of your prep. So yes, great, actually great question, but always assume it is. All right. And now I think I'm on Jonathan. Hi, quit my last job and looking for new opportunities. How can I answer if I got an interview and they asked me why I left my last job? Jonathan. I don't know why you left your last job. Um, there are many, many ways to, um, let me see if I can get this up on the board here. There are many, many ways. Let me see, I don't, you know, it's so funny. Like some of these, they I can move them really. Depending on what the reason is will determine how you would answer that. But the one thing that I would direct you to is uh, in, I don't know if you have the interview intervention book. Uh, you can get, um, actually, by the way, for those of you who, who have ordered the book recently, it has been on back order longer than they anticipated because the manufacturing plant, it was changing out all of its book binding equipment. Wonderful. However, good news is they should be shipping on Monday or Tuesday next week. I give the book away for free. It's $7 shipping and handling to anywhere in the world. But when you go in and you get that offer, uh, you immediately get the ebook and the audio book, okay? And you get a you get a um, another 
a book that's called How to Interview the Employer, 75 Great Questions to Ask Before You Take Any Job. The reason I mention this is um, there is a chapter in there, uh, chapter six, called My Silver Bullet Interview. Okay, so I've identified the 14 most effective interview questions that I think an employer can ask you. And I've also identified the 43 variations of those questions, why they are asked, what they are looking for, and the very best response. Now, here's what's cool. The number one question is, why did you leave your current company? Why are you open to leaving? Why would you consider leaving? And so on. I go through that in the book and in the ebook. The audio book, the audio book is audioed by chapter and for the 14 questions, the audio is broken down by the question. So you can listen to my answer to just that question if you want to. I mean, it's just $7 shipping and handling and you get all that other stuff. So I would check that out because I, the reason I would point you there is because I don't know why you left, but I tell you based on the different factors how to answer it. So I hope that helps. Uh, hope that helps there. Great, great question. It really is a toughie. It's the number one should be asked question. All right, Chris Rogers, how you doing? Mm. All right, hang on. Let me see, Chris Rogers. Dang, I'm trying to. Okay. Uh, Chris Rogers, potential employer gave me second interview with a team member. Awesome. Do I follow up with them or the potential employer? Both just wait. Thanks. Love it. Okay. M multiple things. I get excited about this one. I've got like a whole bunch of stuff to tell you. All right. First thing is, I don't know if everybody knows, but I have actually quite a popular video out there about how to, how to go about kicking butt in the second interview. So if you go to my YouTube channel and you just type second interview, in the search bar, it'll pull it right up. It's a it's a pretty popular one. So even if it's your third interview or fourth interview, you should go check that out. Okay, so it's basically about what are the tactics you use when it's not your first time, and how do you build deeper relationships with the people in in the in the organization, whether that's one person or whether you're meeting with a panel or whether you got four interviews right in a row, it doesn't make any difference. But the second round and the third round and so on. How do you do that? And how do you use language and phrasing to make them feel as though you're already part of the team? It's it's a really good video. So for you, Chris, and everybody else, go check that out. Second thing is about Chris's question. Whenever you're done with a an interview, phone interview, video interview, or Skype or whatever, or in person or panel, you wanna send a thank you email to those interviewers. If you did not get those interviewers emails, one, you should, and two, if you don't get them, then you go back to the recruiter or the HR person or your external recruiter or whoever you're working with and you make sure you get those. So when one of my candidates interviews with one of my clients and they did it over the phone and maybe they didn't exchange emails, I go get it for them, okay? And so, and if they say something stupid like we don't give out those emails, then you email the recruiter and say, please forward this to John Smith, okay? So you go directly at that person and in the, I just got done talking about interview intervention on page 83 of interview intervention, there is a template thank you email and I walk you through the process. It's, it's really effective. I would check that out. Now, the other thing that I would do is when I send a thank you, I always make sure that I send the thank you directly to the person. So if you interview with, with Jane Doe, you send it to Jane Doe and you copy the recruiter or the HR person, or if you're working with an external recruiter, you copy the external recruiter and the internal HR person or recruiter so that they can all drop it into their files and into their systems. And it's important that you copy the external recruiter as well and the, and the internal recruiter or whoever is managing this whole process to see that you did drop a thank you. Then what I would do is at the end of the interview, what you should have done is ask the person, hey, what's the next step in the process? And if the person says, hey, I just work here, man, I don't know, just say, okay, tell you what, what would be, you're, you're, an inter you're interviewing, you know how these things go, what's typically next, right? Just try to get some data. But then either which way, I would go back to the person who's quarterbacking your process, I would send them an email or a phone, or a phone call directly, and I would ask them, what's next? What's next in the process? That's what I would do. So both is the answer to that. I gave you the tactics of how to do it. And let me know how it goes. 
<laughs> so I hope that helps. All right, let's see what's next. Shavaz, Vaz, Shavaz. Appreciate all the. You're welcome, and I appreciate you you saying that. By the way, nothing bums me out more when I can't pronounce your names correctly. Um, I always want to do that. To audio, did, I'm wondering, can you guys go in the chat? And let me know at 10:32 if the audio dropped. Okay. Um, but le- you know, let me know the pronunciation. And remember, you know, I'm I'm English and I you know speak American, <laughs> so you know, try to use the phonetics that I would understand. Okay, simply H. I think we got one in here for you. Interviewed and invited for second interview the next day and was asked for references. I haven't heard back. How long should I wait? Mm. Wait, let's get you up on the board. All right. All right, Simply H, wish I knew your first name. Um, interviewed and invited for a second interview the next day, was asked for references. I haven't heard back. How long should I wait before following up? So Simply H, what you didn't tell me is how long has it been? So so let me, let me try to give you some value here. Okay, whenever any of you go to any interview, I don't care if it's the phone screen, the first in person, the third or fifth interview, it makes no difference. Every time you're there with somebody, even if it's on the phone, even if it's somebody who just got thrown in the process, makes no difference. Always ask, what's next and when when would that likely be? When is that likely to occur? When will I hear from you? Okay? Always, always, always. Because you, you have to have some kind of inkling. And if they tell you no, I don't know, that's pretty poor. Usually they should have some, they should give you some flag in the ground. And here's why the flag in the ground is important. It, it gives you a mental focus and it lets your brain rest. It lets you relax. It actually does. Be, and it keeps you mentally engaged. So I don't mind if it's going to be two weeks I'm not going to hear from you. If you tell me we will call you in two Thursdays, great. I don't have to think about it till then. Right? And I know I've got a date where if something doesn't happen, then I can get back to you on Friday or the following Monday or whatever it is, depending on how, how long of a gap that is. If the gap is super short and they say, hey, Simply H, we're going to get back to you in two days, that's a, that's a pretty tight window. Okay? So what you do is you wait a day or two and then you try to contact them. If they say, hey, we're going to get back to you, it's thir- it's Friday, we're going to get back to you by next Friday, maybe you wait three days. Maybe you wait till Monday or Tuesday in the next the next week uh, to do that, to give them a little bit more, more room because it, it was, you know, they are probably chasing somebody down. So um, it, it, you were invited for the interview the next day. That's awesome. Then I don't know if the, if the second interview was the last interview. Um, if they asked you for references, they could have been asking you for references premature to the offer or the fact that we are now going to give you an offer per reference checks. What most people do and what they should do and what's a better practice is, okay, Simply H, we're giving you an offer and it's contingent on reference checks and background checks or whatever you know they're going to do. But th- it's the offer process that takes time. It's not the... It's not the you know, reference checking that should be holding up. So I don't know how long it has been. Uh, if you, I don't know how many, I have no idea how many questions there are, <laughs> but well, it's not too many. If you drop down there and let me know how long it's been, maybe I can circle back and let you know, you know, what I would, what I, what I would say there. Um, but I hope that, I hope that helps. All right. Interviewed for a second. Okay. Sound cut out. Okay, this is this is good. I'm glad, you know, yes, you dropped. Yes, you dropped. Actually, you know what? Let me, I'm going to, hang on, guys. Let me just get a screenshot of this stuff. I want to send it to these guys. Okay, thank you for that. Carrie Freeman, you are welcome. Did not sign an offer letter, but will do this. Okay, great. Raj, back. I hear noise clicking. Okay, hang on, let me. Let me just, I'm just taking some screenshots. I wish I had my, Kara has been on vacation. I mean, like, this is, this is not good when Kara's on vacation. All right, all clear noise here, noise clicking. Pointers for a Skype interview. Yes. Um, hang on, let me try to get my other one. Okay, Simply H, I hope that helped. All right. Amarnath, Amarnath, I don't know if that's how you pronounce your name. I hope that is. 
Um, so, so all of you know, I have a video out there. It's about maybe 20 minutes. Uh, it's a video um, tips for job seekers. Video interview tips for job seekers, I think is the title. It's a yellow card and it is literally 20 tips of everything to do in getting ready for your Skype interview. Uh, I would just point you to that because, I mean, it's it, it, it might be one of my five favorite uh, teachings that I've ever done because it was a ton of fun. Um, it's a clip out of a live office hour session we did. I gave you the 20 things that I literally go through before live office hours every Thursday. The lights. Now, you might not have lights, but you know what? You got, okay, see those, I don't know if you can see that back there. See the windows back there? You know, you want to put your, your, your computer in front of the window and you want the sunlight hitting your face. It's everything from that to how to look at the camera, to how to prep, to what to do, to machinery, to app shutting, to all that stuff to optimize. Uh, let me see how the lights come back. Okay, sorry guys, hold on, boom. Um, so just everything to optimize uh, your scoring. You watch that, you do that. And I broke it up into like four or five sections. like the prepping section, the getting your environment set up section, like the execution section, and so on. But it's a it, it's a really good one. I would I would check that out. All right. Go camp your Germany cam cam. Let's see here. All right, let's get you up here. All right, Cam Cam, how you doing? Just started a new role two months ago and have been doing really well. Awesome. My manager is in love. My manager is in love with you, I hope. All right, I want to get promoted to associate director within a year. How do I set expectations to make this happen? Cam Cam, there's a number of things that I would recommend that you do. Um, and one thing, just so you guys know, I have a career accelerator program that you can, you can get. That is a paid training program, and that is about how to get a promotion within a year. It's the first 90 days. It's prepping and, and executing on that promotion. It's organizational tactics. It's your performance review. It's excellence planning and idea generation and so on. It's really good if you can swing it. Um, and I also have a leadership program that you can get in. That's a monthly, monthly program that's all about higher performance. However, for Cam Cam, the one thing that I would do, two quick tips here. Number one, you want to make sure that, and, and for anybody who starts right away in the first week, in the first day, ask, ask your boss, okay, in a year from now, all right, we sh you should have asked in the interviewing process, what does success look like? What will, do I need to have accomplished? And so on. You want to confirm what they believe are the success metrics, whether that's level of proficiency, amount of output, uh, production, you know, numbers, sales, uh, whatever, whatever it is that you do. You want to make sure the mic dropped again. 1040. Let me know if, if the mic dropped again. Um, so then what I want you to do is I want you to make sure that you are keeping a diary of everything that you do. I have a career achievements journal out there. Just go to my blog and type career achievements journal. There's even a video that goes along with it and it will teach you how to capture the most important pieces of the things that you're doing. This is incredibly important because as you go through your process this year, you'll want to have this data. Okay, it's and so go, go, you'll understand all that. The other thing that I would do is I have a video out there that I would highly recommend about the fastest way to grow your career and these like five magical questions that you should be asking yourself every day that will ultimately lead to your ability to generate ideas, projects, enhancements, and other things that will go well beyond the scope of your job that in my opinion, is the single greatest ingredient that leads to promotions the fastest. So check check those videos out. They're incredibly, incredibly helpful and they will open your mind to ways of approaching your day and your week and your month and your projects that you probably did not did not think about. Did not think about. So I hope that helps. But uh, but 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 about the expectations, that's also communication with your with your boss. Cool? Okay. Um, I always love somebody thumbs downs this. I, I love it. I don't know if I'm giving bad advice, but <laughs> I, 
How long have we been on? Can anybody tell me that we've been on for... Um, I have no idea how long we've been on. Let's see. Uh, oh, we've been on an hour. All right. Well, that's pretty good. All right. Listen, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take. Uh, I'm gonna take one more here. Adam Stark. All right. Adam from the UK. Big fan. Thanks, buddy. I know you are a frequent attender of my videos. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm writing out my achievements, and I write and saying an achievement is anything you did above and beyond your role and your job description. So first off. We're talking about personal definitions here. However, however, I would not call an achievement anything I did beyond my role. In your role, you will have achievements. You will have achievements. Now, um, there's two ways of, of looking at things. I don't know if you guys have read Out of Reach but Insight, Using Goals to Achieve Your Impossible. That's my second book that I wrote. It's Orange in Nature. It is a really fast read. Um, and it is about how, you know, setting goals and how to get everything you want out of life and having fun doing it. And a big part of the book talks about how to look at the way you set your goals and how you look at the process, the outcome, and so forth. Okay. What I would say is that I tend to focus on the joy of doing. So this for me is the joy. The joy, I'm not thinking about um, oh my God, how many people are going to buy my programs and my metrics are set so that so many people have to buy and I have to earn so much revenue and so on. It's nice that that happens and I want to let you know that it's out there because if you want deeper help, I want you to be able to engage with me at that level and that's wonderful. But for in, for me, the joy is in the doing. Okay, so that's, that's more process oriented. So I need to know every Thursday or most Thursdays, I show up and I want to put on a great show, and all I'm thinking about is the process I'm going through, what I'm teaching you, engaging you, helping build your confidence, getting you to go out there and do things, having a good show, all that good stuff, and I am right there in the moment, and I live it, and I live it, and I focus on that. I think it's a huge achievement to be able to do that. I think it is a huge achievement to focus on the process because while I'm here in the zone with you, all the other stuff, the outcomes that we hope will happen that I'm not thinking about are more likely to happen because I'm concentrating on doing this well. So for you, you have a job, whatever that function is, and you're focused on, uh, you know, here's a, you know, here's a good one just for salespeople because it's easy for everybody to understand. If the salesperson is focused on the outcome and the sale, then what they're not doing along the way is the right research, building the right relationship with the customer or customers, making sure that they're listening to the customer's issues. And so if they're doing all of these things and they're focusing on the process, the sale will happen as it should. Okay, so that's more of an afterthought. So when I think about achievements, I know what you're asking. Like, you know, when I advertise myself inside my company or outside my company, or if I'm going and I'm interviewing now and I want to talk about my achievements, to me, personally, I have achievements daily that I want to make sure I went through the day effectively. And so I, I have certain goals that I want to make sure I accomplish. Over the course of the month or my projects or whatever the duration is, I look at what my achievement was. So we just went through a boot, you know, we just went through a big boot camp sale and then we were going through a live boot camp now, which is why I wasn't here yesterday or next couple of weeks. And I look at what happened. So I didn't sweat the outcome, but I looked at what happened. But no matter what happened, it was an achievement to me because I just, I'm now in the middle of my eighth boot, boot camp. That to me is an achievement. I don't know that it was beyond, you know, the, as far as the expectations go, usually our expectations are not dialed in correctly. We're either undershooting, overshooting. We don't have all the information and all that good stuff. So when I look at achievements, I think that there, you need to look and reflect on your day and your projects and your, your work history with companies or whatever as to how you went through it, what you learned, the joy you had in the doing and all that good stuff. And then there were accomplishments that you had. You implemented this project right? You managed all the account, the books effectively. You helped market your company and increased its brand awareness. That was an achievement. So all of those things are achievements. Uh, the question is, you know, how high? But you know what I do? And this is kind of a funny, I know people, some people laugh at me and some people think this is really cool. But every, you know, every day I think about what happened that had never happened to me before. Um, maybe, you know, 
Maybe it's I helped somebody in a certain way. Maybe I did something for the first time. Um, maybe I did it a different way. Maybe I reached a different plateau uh, as far as my community was concerned. Maybe I'm offering something for the very first time or trying something for the very first time. All of those things are will keep you fresh and in momentum. And if you look and reflect daily like that, I think I think you will be surprised at the achievements that you didn't even consider. So I know it's kind of a long-winded philosophical way of talking about that, but um, you know, when 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 you look at your your job, uh, I think your achievement. There are many many achievements, and I don't I don't know that I would I would eliminate them or include them based on the level in which you achieve them. Some things are going to be this big, and some things are going to be this big. But I'll tell you what. When I first launched a program, whatever that program was, the achievement was launching the program. It didn't matter how many people enrolled. If one person enrolled, I was given that program, everything I had I kept for that person. Or if 100 people enrolled, the achievement was doing it. It wasn't how many. So my job description might be trainer, go train, launch program, help people. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what yours is, but um, but I would I would I would tend to take a broader scope in how I did that. All right, listen, folks, you all are awesome hanging in there for over an hour with me, and thank you for Adam and everybody else who um, who 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 chimed in with your questions, and thank you for your patience with this new technology. And I cannot wait to send this back to the people uh, and let them know about the mic dropping and all that good stuff. But thank you. I mean, I don't know how many of you ended up, you know, coming. Um, but I just, you know, I I, uh, I I love that we could throw this together, kind of an impromptu live office hours. I hope everybody has a great weekend. Uh, be on the lookout on um, on Tuesday for that video about the six big questions to ask uh, your recruiter in your job screen, in your job interview screen. It's a good one. It's a really good one. It'll give you a lot of intel if you. Uh, you know what? If you if I'm still getting emails, we are we did a, a live boot camp session on Wednesday. The self awareness stuff, the starting stuff. We still have four more live sessions. If you are interested in getting in, if you were kind of on the fence, you missed the deadline. If you just email me at support at milewalk.com, I'll give you a coupon code to knock it back down to four ninety seven. If you if you, if you want to jump in, but I, I just I appreciate the community. I want to help as many people as I can. I want to thank you all for being a big part of it. I think your attention truly is the most precious thing you could ever give anybody. It's the best gift ever. Um, and you know when when people just come to these shows, it just it tickles me pink. So, all right, everybody, have a great weekend, and I will see you see you soon. See you soon. At least see me Tuesday in the recording. Talk to you soon.